And uh, if you're guests with us tonight, thank you for, for being here. Appreciate that. Would you like to introduce yourselves? Well, it's too late now. So. Yes, sir. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yep. Jeremy's been here the last three weeks in a row. Awesome. Great to have you. Where'd you say you're from? Uh, we drove up from Florida. Florida. Yeah. Amen. Nice. Amen. Florida's a good place. Yes. Amen. <laughs> I think we have folks down there right now. So, <laughs> amen. Hey, uh, for the. Uh, New Year's service, I hope he can be there. It's just a good time that we have together. For me, I think back when I was lost and what New Year's were like, and I just praise God every every year uh, for New Year's service that we can bring the New Year in with the Lord and God's people, and uh, it's a very special time together. Um, you know, I was talking to Brother Mike, and I didn't realize that um, they kind of knew each other. Brother... Brother Smith and Brother Mike kind of crossed paths or knew each other before uh, before I knew them and before salvation. Uh, Brother Smith used to be in the band and they used to come down and I heard that uh, they kind of crossed paths. <laughs> the, the Clinton boys would kind of lock horns with the Wheeler boys is what I heard and there was some action going on there and and I said, and Brother Mike, you were there in the middle of all that? And so, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. So you never know. Yeah. Well, the Bible says that, uh, you, know, you've enter- you know, you could be entertaining angels unawares. You could also be entertaining other people that you don't know about. And so, but praise God for his goodness. Amen. And that he saves us. Uh, take your Bible, if you would, please turn to Luke chapter 2, Luke chapter 2, Luke chapter 2, please, and um, I know it's the day after Christmas, right? You know, it, you know the day after Christmas, uh, you know, on um, the um, XM radio, they have like three different Christmas stations, and I like the old Christmas songs, and I'll... I'll Listen to them over and over and over and over and over. Uh, you know, you got the, you know, you got the, 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 the ones about Santa Claus and Jingle Bells, and then you have the, the other hymns that they play, and and I love it all, uh, and I'll listen to it up to then then on um, one of those channels you can put, watch it on your TV with the kittens running around and the dogs. I love that around the fireplace. Do y'all do that? Okay, it's, it's on. Um, it's on the. It's one of the channels. They do it like the whole day of Christmas, and it's just playing Christmas, soft Christmas hymns, and it's a fireplace with a tree, and it's a, and, it's, and you know, kittens and puppies running around, and it's great. Um, but the day after Christmas, I don't want to hear one Christmas song. I'm done. I'm like I'm finished. I'm done. And uh, you know, and, and we can be that way with a lot of things with Christmas. And uh, so we're going to go back to Luke chapter 2. I know we were there Wednesday, uh, and I thought about just, just reading a couple verses, but I think we'd like to read a few more. In verse 6, please, verse 6, Luke chapter 2, verse 6, and says, And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now this was, you know, this is it. This is the day, the big day, right? Verse 8 says, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And so that was a big day, amen, when the angels came you know, they're just at work in the field, and the an angel shows up. Uh, and uh, verse 10, it says, And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. So he is the Savior. Amen. 
And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the bat wrapped in, babe, wrapped in swaddling clothes, uh, lying in a manger. I almost said Baptist, okay? Uh, verse 13, suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts and praising God, saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill toward men. Now, people say they were singing. They were saying it, but let's say they were singing, okay? And, and it was a great thing and a big day and an awesome and wonderful day. And, and, uh, and so, uh, so much so in verse 15, it says, And it came to pass when the, uh, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, uh, hey, let's do what they said, right? Let's let us go now. Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, uh, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and and the babe lying in a manger. When they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which is which was told them concerning this child. And uh, all they that heard it wa uh, wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that ha they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. And let's pray. Father, we ask for your blessing and your help tonight. Uh, and thank you for, uh, for most of us. We've had uh, um, just a, a good time as we thought about you and, and uh, your goodness to us and got to spend maybe some extra time with uh, friends and loved ones that we don't normally get to do, maybe uh, a day or two off of work and things like that, Lord, to, to uh, uh, just be an extra special blessing to us. And, and God, we ask your help now. As we look at thy word, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. So, um, you think about this portion of scripture, and we look at it, we've looked at it many, many, many times, and, and uh, Christmas uh, is all about Christ, and we, we were talking about that Wednesday, and it's focused on Christ, and that's where we try to gear it, and and steer people, and hey, did you hear that song, do you, do you know what that means, and and, uh, and even sometimes people think about Christ more than normal, uh, and people come to celebrate Christmas, and they gather, and, and uh, that's a great thing. Uh, and there's, uh, you know, lots of times traveling going on. We have people that have traveled, and people that have traveled in, and, and people maybe that wouldn't normally go to church, go to church on Christmas, and, and all that sort of thing. Um, but you think about this first Christmas says we, you know, we can only read about what happened. We don't know the other stories. So let's just read what happened and think about this. Well, uh, the angels are in the air. They're praising God. And uh, we're assuming they're singing and, and there's music and, you know, oh, you know, and the, maybe the sky lit up and it was great and wonderful. And that was awesome. You don't see that every day. Uh, the angel coming down and talking to them directly, that would you know, that would be a pretty amazing thing, right? Shepherds are coming and visiting. Um, just, you know, kind of like you think about Christmas. People come by and they visit, right? Uh, the wise men came from out of town. Now, they didn't make it in time for Christmas. They were a little bit late, but they came for the same reason, amen? Uh, so we'll just put them in the picture too, right? And so we have all this going on. But look at verse 20 says, now, now, just think about today, too. The Bible says, after this, in verse 20, it says, after the shepherds had visited um, the baby here, in verse 20, it says, the shepherds returned. Now, yes, they were glorifying and praising God, but they just went back to work. And as far as we know, that was it. Nothing else ever happened. They never got another vision from an angel, they never saw Jesus again, they're just, their life went back to normal. Now, I like to think that things change for them, but we don't know. But thinking about what happens at Christmas, even, you know, just, if, if you look at the story, the shepherds, they returned. They just went back. 
The angels, uh, we never heard from them again about this. The wise men, they went back home. Um, and it just seems like, in the story, it just seems like everybody just kind of went back to normal after that first Christmas day. And things went, just went back to normal. Except for Joseph and Mary. We know for sure Things were never the same for them. Uh, when Jesus came, it changed their life forever. And you think about you know Christians uh, and other people all over the world uh, celebrate Christmas and they think about Christ and they sing about Christ and and then after Christmas it's it's done. You know they just go back to work and. And they pack the Christmas stuff away, and they put it away, and put the tree down, and, and take the lights down, hopefully. Uh, drives my wife nuts if you don't take your lights down. I kind of like it. I was like, it would be just so easy just to plug them back in. Uh, but that's another story, and, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about that sort of thing. Um, but uh, life just goes back to normal. And, um, you know, you think about when a baby is born. Now, if you've had a baby born, you understand. If you haven't had a baby born, you just can't understand this, and I'm, I'm sorry. Um, but when a baby is born, it changes your life, I mean, forever. I'm sorry, Isaiah, you just can't understand this, and I, I'm sorry. Uh, but when a baby's born, your life is changed. I mean, you don't even real. I mean, you're expecting it, but but it's it's. You know, the biggest thing for us. I mean, I was I was counting on things, but what what really messed me up was we used to just get up and go. You just when you're ready to go, you just go. But when you have a baby, it wasn't that way. <laughs> it's not that way. I mean, it's like an event. It's like, and then there's no room in your car ever. You know, you have strollers and car seats, and, and it's just like, this is such an inconvenience. Um, but babies change your life. Now, two is also a change. Once you're past two, then it's really not. I mean, two, three, four, it's all the same after that. But, uh, but that first baby changes your life. Yes. And, um, you know, and, and, and for Joseph and Mary, uh, their life changed, but you know when 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 we met Christ, was there that was there a change? Was there something that changed us forever? Um, you think about Joseph and Mary. Now they never returned. The shepherds returned. And let's just say, for argument's sake, their life went back to normal. I mean, they just went back out, and they never heard from an angel again. They never saw Jesus again, and. And their life just went back to normal. Um, the, uh, the angels, they went back to floating on the cloud and sprinkling spoofle dust or whatever they do in heaven. And they're, they're doing their job. And the wise men, they went back to the east and they did their kingly things and just started kingly being a king again. And, and, but Mary and Joseph, their life changed. They did, they did not go back to normal. Their life was changed forever. Um, think about this. They, uh, 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 they, they had to leave Bethlehem. They went from Bethlehem to Egypt. They went from Egypt. They moved from Egypt to Nazareth. Um, but everywhere they went from then on, Jesus went with them. You know, I was thinking about this. Did Joseph one, one day said, hey, I got an idea. Let's take Jesus with us. Do you think he did that? He probably didn't say it that way, right? Like, hey, because it's just assumed that you would take him with you, right? I mean, it's like, we should take him, right? Amen. It's just assumed that you would do that. And it just seems like it would be assumed that we would do that. There should not be an event or a time in our lives from the time that we meet him that he doesn't go with us. That's good. Amen. 
And more than, more than he's just with us, but we ought to on purpose understand that he's with us. I mean, he used to not be with me at these things I did at work, but now he's here. He used to not be with me when I went places and talked to people, but now he is with me and, and he's there on purpose. And it's not just an accident that he's with me and he's consciously with me. They never went anywhere without him. From, I mean, it was day and night. Jesus was with them. Uh, now, one time they did mess up, right? And I love that. I love when people in the Bible mess up. And, you know, just, but, you know, his own, I mean, his own, Jesus, I mean, God, they forgot him, right? For a whole day. I love that. I mean, I, I don't know if I've ever left the kid a whole day. Okay, Brother Tim has. Okay. So he's like people in the Bible. I mean, so who has ever left their kid? To be honest, you've left your kid. You forgot your kid and left them. Raise your hand high, proudly. Okay. Okay. Amen. Thank you. We've done that. I mean, uh, you know, we've left kids at home, and praise the Lord, they're little babies, and they're the easiest ones to leave because you're not used to having them, <laughs> right? You're not used, so it's easy to miss them when you're not used to having them, and they don't go anywhere. They're just wherever you left them. I mean, they're still on the bed, or they're still in the car seat. Uh, we've left them at church. Uh, we've had our kids running after us, you know, and you know, that's not as easy to do, but it's possible, you know, and just, you know, and people call, hey, you left your kid, and, you know, you come back to get the kid, and, and um, so we've done those sort of things, um, but we went back to get them, right? As we were like Mary and Joseph, you know, when Mary and Joseph, they, they said they were assuming he was with the family, I mean, he's with Uncle Billy or Uncle whatever the name, you know. You know, they were just this, maybe, maybe, maybe the Lord Jesus said, hey, Uncle Billy, can I ride with you there? And then maybe he rode with them there. They were assuming, I don't know. But they were assuming he was with them and they didn't really check. They didn't really verify and they left him, right? But as soon as they found out, what did they do? Right, that, it, what any parent would do, we got to go back and get them. And they just did whatever they had to do. It was a long way back, a whole other day back, and, and uh, they went back to get them. And I thought about times in my life where Jesus used to be the big thing in this. And you ever noticed, have you ever come to the place where you realize he's not anymore? And I think what the Lord is telling us, it's not that you won't leave him behind sometimes, but do you run back and get him? Do you run back where you left him? Um, hey, listen, I know I'm, I'm talking to you as if you're saved, and I'm assuming you're saved, but I don't know. But, um, you know, there'll be times that we leave him behind. There'll be times where we leave him out. And when God speaks to your heart and you realize that you left him out, that's, that's the moment we make that decision. Is, are we going to keep going or are we going to change that? But think about this. Mary and Joseph, thank you, Brother Rich, appreciate that. And we're not having Sunday school next week. Brother Rich said, you know, why? And I said, well, I just, cannot ha I just cannot risk you saying to my pastor in Sunday school certain things. We're just not having Sunday school. I'm just kidding, Brother Rich. I'm just kidding. I love Brother Rich, and he's a great Sunday school teacher. But I said, I just can't risk that. I just, I just can't. So. Okay, okay. Um, so Mary and Joseph, now think about this. Because they were with him, Every day from then on, 
um, they they had to they had to get to know him. He said, "What do you mean? When you when you bring that baby home, you have you don't know that he's a stranger. That baby's a stranger, and they're not all alike. I didn't know that. I thought a baby was a baby. But when you when you have babies." They're not all, I didn't find that out till the second baby, because the baby was a baby. Now, Emily was a good baby. Uh, Emily was quiet. She was, um, she never, she didn't cry. We put her on, got her on schedule. She just slept all night, ate her food, did what babies do, or supposed to do. Put her in nursery. She was Good to go. And we thought, Man, this is easy. Let's have another one. Man. When Zachary came along, woo, brother. He, like Emily, you could put her down and she was gold. Zachary, he was gold. And then you do this and you let go. Wah! Touch him, he's good. It was amazing. You, know, you could do that. Stop. We would, we would put him in the nurse. We, we'd visit some churches. Uh, we'd visit a couple churches on deputation and raise him, we were on raising money or support to come here. And we, we could hear him screaming the entire service. I mean, we used to think, we used to have him in his room. And, and it's like, he's got to stop sometime. And I, it was amazing. It was amazing how long he could go. <laughs> Emily would say, Daddy, can we turn him off? And then one time he was just going at it like he did, and, and then he just got real quiet, like really quiet. We thought, wow. We went in, and Emily had stuffed his mouth full of popcorn. <laughs> And he liked that, so it's a, but it, I mean, she, it was coming out of his nose. It was, a, I said, good job, Emily. <laughs> it worked. So Emily was, Emily was quiet because she was independent. You know what? And she's the same now as she was when she was a baby. Zachary <laughs> was more needy. But Zachary would talk a lot, and he always had a lot of questions, and, and he was always very good with food, <laughs> very good with food. He could use a spoon at a, as soon as he could start eating, he would, he would use a spoon. Bethany, she just loved everybody. She just wanted to hug everybody and loved everybody, and we tried, we had her on a little soccer team one time, and it was just terrible. Um, you know, you know when you're when you're when you're playing soccer, you're supposed to keep the ball. And, well, you know, if somebody wanted the ball, oh, you can have the ball. And then the other team would score. She'd go give them a hug. You did a great job. And and uh, that was Bethany. Mallory. Uh, now think about this. When she was a little baby and couldn't even talk yet, if you got hurt really bad in front of her, guess what she did laughed. She would, she had these little buck teeth, she laughed. And, and guess what? She still does it today. <laughs> but you have to, you have to get to know your, the, people are not all the same. You know, strangers when they get to your house and when Jesus got there, they did, they, you know, when you got saved, you knew him, but you didn't know him. When Jesus came to their house, they knew him, but they didn't know him. And they had to learn to get to know him. They had to learn to be his parents. And you know what? And when you get saved, you have to learn to know him. You might know him, but you don't know him yet. And, uh, and that just, that takes time. And, and uh, like Brother, Brother Smith preached this morning about the love languages. He went through all that. You know what God's love language is? Obedience. 
obedience. Yeah. Hey, listen, uh, and, uh, you know, we don't know Christ, and we don't know how to please him right away. Mary and Joseph had to spend time and, and learn Christ. You think about this. When did, it, when did that click? When did, they were Christians, too. They had to learn to please and obey him, their son. Think about this. Turn, to, turn in your Bible to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2 and verse, well, you're already there. Verse 19, please. Verse 19. Now, we just read about all that, that stuff that happened with the angel and, and the shepherds told them all the, you know, all the stuff that happened. Well, you know, they just heard about, Mary and Joseph just heard about all that. They didn't see it. They, they heard about this. And, and so when, uh, when they came to Jesus, when they came to Mary and Joseph, they said, man, these angels came and it was awesome. And they told us you were here. And could you imagine how that was for them? Well, the Bible says that Mary kept all these things and did what? And pondered them in her heart. You know what she was pondering? I mean, yes, the Lord told her who Jesus was, right? I mean, we all know that God told her who he was. And, you know, this was still all kind of new. And she still had to process who he was. Even though she knew who he was, she still had to process who he was. That's what that word there means. She had to ponder this, like, what, what is this? What does this mean? Like, who is this and what does this mean? And she was still processing. Just like when you got saved, you knew who Jesus was, but the more you learned about him, you're, you're like, oh. You know, and you just... It's just that processing of who he really is. And the more you understand, the greater it got and the bigger he became. Then um, um, when you read about the, uh, the, the water being turned into wine and all that stuff, uh, look at Luke chapter 2, verse 51. Verse 51 says, and he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them, right, because they were his earthly parents. Uh, but his mother kept uh, all these sayings in her heart. There's a little bit different here. When she heard about him, she pondered that. When he said something, she kept that. It's not the same. When he said something, she just received that. She kept that. When she heard about him, she pondered that. You know, when you hear about the Lord, you hear testimonies, that goes through your head like, wow, I wonder if, wow, the Lord answered a bunch of prayers for Michelle and... and um, and Doug, and why would you do that for them, Lord, and not me? Because I didn't have any prayers answered this week, but maybe you would do that for me. You know, you start you doing all this, and, or maybe God answered prayer for somebody else, but you were praying for the same thing, and, and it didn't happen. You know, and, you, and there's just a lot of process constantly of, of your processing who is he. he? Yeah, I know he's God, I know he loves me, and I know he died on the cross, but there's a lot of relationship things that you process. But when it comes down to what he says, uh, there's that love factor. Even though I don't understand it all, I'll just keep it. Because his love language is obedience. Amen? And uh, you remember what uh, Mary said at the wedding? And I think this is kind of, I, I'm not sure when it happened, but I know for sure it happened there. She said, whatever he says, Amen. whatever he saith unto you, do it. Amen. If he says it, you keep it. 
Now, she had a lot of things that I'm sure even then, even when he did that, she's processing and pondering in her heart. But I know one thing for sure, whatever he says, you just, you do it. You do it. And there's a difference. Um, their lives were changed forever. The shepherds, maybe. I don't know. You say, well, they had to have. Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I would have thought Demas would have been changed forever. Uh, you know, uh, even Peter himself, uh, you remember when, they, when you first read about Peter? What did he do? He, he, he got rid of the boat, got rid of the nets. But what did Peter say? I go fishing. He went back to it. Peter returned, but he didn't stay returned. Demas returned, and he stayed returned. You know what? And I, I think about Christians. We can do that too. You know, uh, they did it right away, but we can return as well. We can, to return is to turn away from Christ, to leave him. Are we like, uh, well, look at this. So, so the Bible says uh, um, in verse 51, he, he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept these sayings in her heart. Verse 19, she kept all these things and pondered them. That, that's when you're not sure. You're still thinking about it. But the other one, she said, I'm keeping keep these. That's a for sure thing. I know that that is. Um, so, are we like the shepherds? Just for illustration's sake, are we like the shepherds or the wise men that came to Jesus and returned to their, just the old life? Or are we like Mary and Joseph? that our lives were changed forever. They never left Jesus. They nurtured their relationship with Jesus. And everything that was said about him was a big deal and considered and pondered, and his words were kept. Have you returned? Oh, I used to pray every day. Maybe you need to return. I used to, hey, I used to go soul winning or pass out tracks or I used to do that or I used to be separated from the world. I used to not uh, watch that filthy thing, but I do now. Or I used to. Oftentimes I have people come and they, and, uh, and I asked them their testimony or where they've been. Well, I used to. But where are we now? Hey, listen, uh, Christmas, now I know, I'm speaking to you as if you're saved. So your Christmas was maybe uh, last year or 10 years ago or 40 years ago or 50 years ago, and you, and you met him. Have you, has he always been with you? Have you, have you grown with him? Right? Do his words... You know, I was sitting... We were on vacation. And uh, we're in this big church. And, and um, I like to get where I can watch people. I was listening to the preaching. But I, was, I like to get where I can watch people. And we were uh, up in... Uh, we were in the balcony, Right? Right? Okay. We're in the balcony, and, and uh, there was this lady about two or three seats ahead of us. Like, like I was sitting like where Cassidy's sitting, and this lady's sitting about where Hudson's sitting. And uh, during the announcement, she had her phone out, and she was playing a game. Color, she was coloring. That's what, as close as I could see what she was doing. Now, I don't know about this thing about coloring. Maybe I'll do it. I colored when I was four and five, but she was coloring on her phone pictures. 
So she colored all during the announcements. And I said, okay, she'll stop after the announcements. And during the music, she still colored. And during all of the uh, preliminary stuff, she was coloring. And then when the preacher got up to preach, guess what she did? She colored the entire service. She was coloring. I, it was really hard for me. I was, I was getting so mad. But then at the same time, I thought, you know, she, she's here on Sunday, but she's gotten to the place where the things of God don't mean anything to her. She's, she's just gone back. I mean, I, I don't know if she's saved. She's colored. During the invitation, colored. And then she got up, and, and we were leaving, in and she was standing at the exit we're in, in saying bye to people. And I thought, good night. We have a, 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 a it was, she was actually an older woman, probably like 62, um, <laughs> older. And I thought, good night. Here, this, 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 I don't know how long she's been in church. She had a, you know, had a Bible and all that stuff. But to just come to church and color and be on your phone the whole service, or even part of the service. Um, hey, listen, have you returned? Have you gone, have you, have you left Jesus? Hey, listen, this Christmas, um, think back on your life. You need, maybe you need to get back to where you used to be in some areas because he's as big as he ever was. He's as great as he ever was. And uh, the more you get to know him, the bigger and greater he is. Revelation chapter 2, I know thy works. Thy labor, thy patience, and how that thou canst not bear them which are evil, and hast tried them which say they're apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. And, and you're good, you, you have the truth, and you say that's not, you know, this is not according to the word of God, and, and you're, you're, you're outwardly serving, and, and uh, he says, I know your labor, labor and your patience, and, and uh, how you don't put up with wickedness. And has borne and has patience for my name, my name's sake, has labored and not fainted. I mean, that's a pretty good resume. And it looks good, and you might look good. But where's your heart? Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Maybe you've returned. And only you can take care of that. Hey, listen, I, I, I really believe with all my heart, really, that this year God has some great things. And God wants to use you. I really believe that. I mean, if the, I mean I, there's never been a time where God did not want to use you, but I believe that there's a time... This, this is going to be a time that we can do something big for God. I really believe that. This is a, this is a great day to be a Christian and a wonderful time. And, uh, uh, you know, it might be getting dark outside, but God can use some lights. Because you've got to think, if, 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 if you can see the world's crazy, so can other people. And they don't know where to turn. They don't know what to do, and you have the answer. Uh, if you've turned, then come back. Come back. The wonder of it all, the wonder of it all, just to think that God loves me. Don't lose the wonder. Don't lose the wonder. Let's all stand. Father, we love you, and God, if you've spoken to hearts, um, God, if we've turned in any way, 
Lord, there was a time where maybe some folks here, maybe that lady that I was thinking about and talking about, maybe there was a time where she sat in church and, and wept and, and cared about the things of God. Maybe we're there. Maybe there was a time that, that we used to come forward because God uh, burned, God's word burned in our hearts and, and uh, we were faithful to you and we were faithful not because we were made to but because we wanted to, because we loved you. Maybe something's changed in our heart. Not a big thing and, and hardly even noticeable, but, but we know it's different. God, we don't want to be satisfied with that. Lord, please help us to, to love you with all our hearts. With our heads bowed, maybe God spoke to your heart. Maybe it's just a small thing. Maybe something that just slipped in, but God spoke to your heart. Why don't you return? Why don't you return? Why don't you come as the music plays? You know what I, people used to ask me a lot years ago, a lot, people would ask, how do I know God's will? People used to ask that a lot. You know, I almost never hear that anymore. And I thought, maybe it's, maybe it's me, maybe it's, but it just seems like people don't care as much about God's will. I used to hear, people used to ask me all the time, you know, they'd make me, Pastor, i got to talk to you. How do I know God's will? I almost never have anybody ask that anymore. Um, hey, listen, um, it's still there, man. It's still, God's, God's as great as he's ever been and greater than we could ever know. So let, listen, God gives us another year. It's going to be, I think, exciting. So let's, uh, let's not miss a thing. Amen? Well, hey, listen, I'm glad you're here the day after Christmas and in, in church. So as far as I'm concerned, I love you, man. So uh, this is awesome. Thank you, Brother Smith, for preaching this morning. Brother Rich, thank you for that Sunday school with that guy with pants on and, and all those Kool-Aid on the white horse. And it was just great. It was wonderful. Amen? <laughs> no, those are those are great lessons. I really, I really, I like the. You know, you're right though. I used to look at that when I was lost and scared me to death. It still bothers me, but it's totally different being on this side of it. And um, amen. All right, hey Chris, I need to talk to you real quick right after church, if you would, wouldn't mind, please. Brother Doug, would you dismiss us in prayer, please?